information with. So let's get started. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Christy and I work for Medtronic. And tonight I have the pleasure of hosting this webinar where you're gonna to get to hear from Dr. Brittany Barrett Harlow. Dr. Barrett Harlow graduated from Emory University right in our backyard with a Bachelor of Science in Neuroscience and Behavioral Biology. And then she later received her Doctor of Medicine degree from the Medical College of Georgia. She completed her general surgery internship and urology residency at the University of Texas at Houston, MD Anderson Cancer Center, a very, very well-known place. And in 2018, she received special recognition by the Society of Women in Urology as a finalist in its outstanding resident category. She also completed her sexual medicine and prosthetic urology fellowship at Uro Urology Centers of Alabama. Dr. Barrett Harlow is a member of an array of professional organizations and has co-authored several urology abstracts and publications and has even given presentations at professional conferences in the US and abroad. She specializes in sexual medicine and prosthetic urology with a focus on erectile dysfunction, testosterone replacement, Pyrone's disease, and male and female incontinence, which is what we'll be discussing tonight, along with a therapy called Interstim. And as I mentioned, I work for Medtronic, and that's the company that actually developed this therapy. While you might not know the name Medtronic, you probably do know somebody who's had a pacemaker, and that's what we're most known for. So with her, without further ado, I'm gonna pass this mic to Dr. Barrett Harlow so that you can hear more about this. But before I do, again, just a few reminders, everybody's phones were muted upon entry. So if you have a question and we hope that you do, please feel free to type it in the Q&A box at the lower portion of your screen. Everybody's names will remain anonymous. We'll answer those at the end of the presentation. Likewise, please answer that anonymous poll that you saw pop up on your screen during the presentation. And there's gonna be another survey and poll at the end, but I'll get to that later. And now allow me to welcome Dr. Barrett Harlow. Thanks so much, Christy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna apologize in advance. I have a little bit of a sore throat, but we're gonna work through it tonight. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules. Everyone has a busy life, I get it. I've got two young kids, but thank you for taking time out to tune in tonight and figure out what we can do, what offers we can give you regarding your overactive bladder and get back control. You know, sometimes patients come in and they're so frustrated, so disheartened that they don't have any control over their bladder, no control over their day-to-day -day activities because their bladder is running their entire life. So tonight, my goal is to let you know what opportunities, what options we have for you to just know that there's more than medications, because sometimes that's all patients think that are available. So if we get started, how do I regain control? Will I ever regain control? Oftentimes I'll have patients come in and their concerns is that everywhere that they go, they have to know where a bathroom is or they're playing with their grandkids and they're stopping every five minutes because they have to rush to a bathroom. They can't wear white pants or khaki pants because if they have an accident, it shows through their clothing. And that's not a way to live. We know that as patients age and different things that we do in our diet and day-to-day -day activities, it can affect our bladder, but that doesn't mean that our bladder has to control us. So tonight, I wanna give you information on different treatment options to let you regain control to let you think about what life would be like if you didn't have to worry about where is the bathroom every time I go to the store, or I'm gonna have to stop on the way home because I know I'm not gonna make it. Things to think about, overactive bladder, urinary frequency, urgency, incontinence, leakage, it's quite common. More than 50% of patients haven't discussed it with their doctor, and 44% of patients or more than 44% of patients who have discussed it with their doctor are still embarrassed about talking about it. So it's something that patients inherently don't really want to speak on. And as providers, it's our, you know, it's our job to really pull it out of you and make you feel comfortable talking about it. But I also want you to know you're not alone. 50% of patients are dealing with this. So does any of this sound familiar to you? 
you're urinating more than eight times a day. On average, we would like for you to go to the bathroom every three to four hours, so six times a day or so. If you're going to the bathroom more than that, you may have overactive bladder. Do you ever get the feeling that I got to go now? Everything, get out of the way. Everyone, get out of the way. That's a sign of overactive bladder. And like I said before, planning activities around the bathroom, knowing, okay, I'm going shopping. There's a bathroom here. There's a bathroom there. I'm at the back of the store. Let me go ahead and stop before I go to the front. All of that can be signs of overactive bladder. Also, patients will say they're getting up multiple times in the middle of the night or they're having to use pads or liners to stay dry and maybe even diapers sometimes because the pads aren't sufficient. All of that is your body telling you that something's wrong and we have options for that. So like I said, you are not alone. Bladder control problems affect one in six U.S. adults and there is a bowel, I'm sorry, bladder control problems. And there is a bladder bowel relationship. So we know patients who have bladder issues are, are more likely to have bowel issues as well, fecal incontinence, not knowing when you need to defecate and having an accident. One in 12 adults suffer from bowel issues. So it goes hand in hand. And these things can affect your sleep. They can affect your confidence. They can affect your self-esteem and overall general health. I'll have Female patients come and tell me, you know, whether it's their bowel or bladder issues, that it hinders their relationship with their spouse because they're embarrassed by it. Or it hinders them going out with their friends because they don't want to be that one friend that says, oh, I got to stop and go to the bathroom again when they're on a girl's trip. So we want to get you back that quality of life, that control over your life and your day-to-day -day activities. Good news, you do not have to be tied to a bathroom. There are options. And if you're a patient of mine, I always talk to my patients about behavioral things, medicines, and procedures. And you'll hear me reiterate that throughout the entire presentation tonight, because I never want you to think that we're going straight to procedures. We have procedures that are great procedures and offer you a lot of, a lot of control and improvement in your quality of life. But there are also behavioral things that we have to address and medications for some patients work. So let's talk about what those options are. And before we get there, what causes bladder issues? Daily habits. So that's that behavioral count, that behavioral piece. Coffee, soda, tea, spicy foods, chocolate, alcohol, all the great things in life can irritate your bladder and make you feel like you need to go more frequently with urgency, can't get there in time. And I never want you to feel like you need to stop those things, but more so be cognizant and aware of it. You know, I'll have a patient come in and says, yeah, I drink a pot of coffee a day. That caffeine is gonna irritate the bladder and make you have to go more frequently. So maybe cutting back on that. But those are things within our day-to-day -day activities that can make the symptoms worse. Also, if you think about constipation or diarrhea, you know, for our pelvis, everything is so close. So if the rectum is ever inflamed from you being constipated or if you have IBS or any or ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, if the rectum's ever inflamed and bothered, it can irritate the bladder as well and make those urinary symptoms worse. So we talk about having good daily bowel movements. Medications and supplements, different things irritate the bladder. You have to be on blood pressure medication and diuretics to keep your blood pressure control. Now it's making you go to the bathroom all the time and you can't get there in time. So we know that those can cause irritations to the bladder. And then pregnancy, childbirth, pelvic floor injury. If you've had a crush injury to your pelvis, all of those things, if it's distorting or changing your anatomy, it can change how your bladder functions. So how does the bladder work? Big picture. If you look, and hopefully you can see my cursor, but your kidneys produce all the urine in your body and it drains down to your bladder. Your bladder is supposed to store kind of like a balloon, if you will. It's supposed to store, store, store until it's full and then you squeeze and empty. When that balloon is about halfway full, it sends information to the nerves in your pelvis that says, hey, I'm getting full. I may need to use the bathroom in a little bit. 
And those nerves translate that message to the brain so that the brain knows, okay, we need to make a stop to the bathroom. We still expect for us to have time to get to the bathroom. And sometimes it's a breakdown in that communication to the brain or the brain back to the bladder that causes us to have urgency and frequency and incontinence, whether it be for the urinary system or for the, um, for the GI system with fecal incontinence. So when you think about common bladder problems, three different areas, and we're gonna dive into it. Stress incontinence, urinary retention, and overactive bladder, or OAB. What is stress incontinence? Ever feel like anytime you sneeze, laugh, cough, you gotta tense up because otherwise you're gonna leak? That's stress incontinence. Cough, laugh, sneeze, pick up something heavy, bend over, urine's leaking out. And that's due to, typically due to a urinary sphincter problem. I tell my patients, it's like a faucet. Your faucet, you got to turn it all the way off to get the water to stay in, and you open it up to let it go through. If you have a leaky faucet, sometimes you'll have stress incontinence. Your sphincter, your muscle that controls your urination, isn't as strong as it should be. And so when you laugh, cough, sneeze, do different things like that, it can cause you to leak. Urinary retention is not being able to empty your bladder completely. Now that doesn't mean that you can't urinate at all. It just means that you're not emptying it effectively. And so sometimes patients will say they have a weak stream or dribbling stream. Sometimes they'll have to use a catheter. Sometimes they don't, but it's not being able to empty your bladder to its completion. And then overactive bladder. So urgency, have to go to the bathroom now, get out of the way. Frequency, go into the bathroom more than every three to four hours. Leaking before you get there. And I say leaking, but sometimes patients will tell me, it's not a leak. Everything is going through. I have completely soaked myself. But not being able to control your urine with the sudden urge to go, that's considered overactive bladder and urge incontinence. And our goal with any of these treatment options is to get you more control so that you can get to the bathroom in time, so that you're going every two to three hours instead of every 30 minutes to an hour. So here we go again, lifestyle changes, which is behavioral, oral medications, and advanced therapies or procedures. Lifestyle changes, we talked about those diet things coffee, soda, tea, all of the known bladder irritants. And some patients will come in and say, I've already tried this. I've cut back on my coffee. I've changed my tea to decaffeinated tea. I avoid alcohol or chocolate or anything that irritates my bladder and yet I'm still having symptoms. Great, at least you've started some of the treatment options and doesn't mean that we have to stay there but we know that certain things in our activities and our day-to-day -day activities will worsen the symptoms. So I want you to think about that and consider what you may be able to cut back on to help with your urinary issues. There's also pelvic floor therapy. So bladder bowel retraining and Kegel exercises, different physical therapy or um, maneuvers to kind of strengthen that pelvic floor and teach your bladder to relax. When you look at oral medications, medications work for a great percentage of patients, but the hard part is medicines can cause side effects and medications for overactive bladder is a medicine you have to take every day. If you miss a dose or stop taking the medication, the symptoms can return. So while they're great options, they may not be options for everyone. When you think about some of the side effects from medications, you can have dry eyes, dry mouth, constipation. It can alter your blood pressure. Um, we have to make sure that it's not gonna interact with any medications you're currently taking. And we know that over time, patients stop taking their medications. It's just another pill that they have to remember to take day in and day out. So while it's great treatment options, it's not for everyone, either because it's not giving them the results they want, it's causing too many side effects and you know, you're taking one medicine to fix one issue and now you have another issue or they just can't adhere to the day-to-day -day taking. Um, they want something that's a little bit more permanent. 
So patient dissatisfaction, and this is a big slide. 20% of patients, 20% of patients are extremely satisfied with their current treatment. That means majority of our patients, my patients, other physician patients are not happy and they're still having the same symptoms despite being on whatever treatment paradigm. And if you look at what our, the attrition rate is, meaning we lose patients over time, 60% of patients don't come back after the first visit, 80% of patients don't come back after the second visit, and 90% of patients don't come after the third visit. And a lot of times it may be because patients aren't aware that there are other options. So one thing that Georgia Urology is really working to do and has made great strides in doing is having a patient pathway and having patient advocates. Meaning if we have a patient come in and we evaluate you and say, yeah, we're concerned you have overactive bladder, you have urgency, frequency, you have leakage. There's a nurse navigator program that we can enroll you in where a nurse will call you every one, every four to six weeks, so one to one and a half months, and check in to see how's medication working. If we start you on a tablet, give you a month on that medicine. Have you noticed any improvement? If you haven't, don't get lost in the ether. Let's switch you to something else. If two medicines don't work, let's look at what procedures maybe you benefit from. Are you having side effects? Do we need to switch the medicine sooner? That way you're not getting lost in, this, in the treatment paradigm and not knowing what's next and not coming in to be treated and living with these issues. So, and I jump back to that. So if you get a number, for my patients, you'll get this. Whenever we talk about overactive bladder, we give you our nurse navigator number. Don't ignore the number because they will call and call back to back to back and leave voice messages. But answer, they're really trying to figure out what can we do to get your symptoms better? Is the current treatment option working? Do we need to switch pathways? but that way we can get you control of your bladder sooner than later. So when you think about advanced therapy, so we talked about behavioral things, we talked about medications, now we're looking at procedural things. For bladder control, there's three different, uh, three different procedural uh, options for it. When it comes to bowel control, there's really only two, and we're gonna focus more in on the bladder control aspect. I will say before we advance to any third line therapies or any procedures, we do get some studies before time to figure out more about your bladder. Um, one namely being your, what we call urodynamics. And it's like an EKG for the bladder. It tells us what the bladder muscle is doing, tells us what that faucet is doing. Um, how well do you store urine? Do you have an early desire to use the bathroom? Do you empty completely? Does your bladder quiver when it's getting filled up with water as opposed to staying quiet until you decide you wanna use the bathroom? And it helps guide us on what procedures you may benefit from. So if we dive into the procedures, Botox. So everyone thinks about Botox and they think about, okay, injections all over the face. But Botox is used in medicine in a lot of areas for headaches, for muscle spasms, but also for overactive bladder. And what it does, the medicine is injected into the bladder muscle, typically done in the office, and you can drive yourself home the same day. But what it does is help to relax that bladder so that it can store more urine, give you more control, give you more time to get to the bathroom. <clears throat> but just like with Botox in the face, it wears off over time. So usually every three to six months, a patient is coming back in to get another injection. Because of that retreatment, a lot of patients tend to fall off of Botox because they don't like having to come back in to get multiple injections throughout the year. Now, for those patients where it works really well, they'll stay on it, and it's a great treatment option. But we do know the fact that it's a retreatment, um, it's, a, it's a, a treatment option that requires retreatment. Patients tend to fall off from it. So percutaneous tibial neuromodulation, you may hear PTNM or PTNS. This is stimulation of a nerve indirectly to help your bladder to relax. And the way that this looks, if, if you think about when you're driving a car, 
right? I said, I have two young kids. If I'm trying to figure out where I'm going and I have directions and my toddler is screaming in the background and the radio is turned up and I'm looking for a street, I will turn down the radio. I'll ask my toddler to please keep it down all so that I can see better to find the street that I'm going to. And you're saying, why am I doing that? I can hear, it doesn't change my vision, but we know when there are multiple different things going in, you have multiple different inputs. If you can quiet down some of those inputs, it helps you focus better on what you're looking for. So I tell the toddler to calm down and turn down the music so that I can focus better on what street I need to turn on to. It's the same thing for the bladder. When it comes to tibial nerve modulation, or when we talk about sacral nerve modulation, we're trying to quiet the nerves that are telling the bladder to be too overactive so that it can focus on storing urine until you need to use the bathroom so that you're not leaking. Now with the tibial nerve modulation, some patients like it because it is not invasive, meaning nothing is going inside the body, but it is a time commitment. And the way that it works every week for 12 weeks, so three months, you're coming in for about 30 minutes for us to place a little electrode pad over the ankle. Um, and there's a nerve in the ankle that stimulates the bladder to tell it to relax such that you can store more urine, have more control. Now, after that 12, 12 week period, you still have to come in monthly for what we call like a top-up session, keep that nerve active, okay? But it's a great treatment option for patients who say, medicines aren't working. I'm not interested in anything invasive. The tibial nerve modulation is a great option for that. And then sacral nerve modulation. So still trying to quiet down that external noise, focusing in on the bladder. Sacral nerve modulation can be done with a system called Interstim. And what this is, it's a test in the office. And I tell patients to test because we never want to implant a device that's not going to work. This is an Interstim is a device that has an electro lead that's kind of like the size of, it, of one of your hair. It's very thin. And we implant it down into a nerve by your tailbone. It's connected to a battery that stimulates that nerve to help the bladder relax. And like I said, we don't wanna implant something that doesn't work. So we do it as two different stages. The first stage is a test stage. And this sometimes, depending upon where you go, can be done in the office, in a surgery center. Sometimes we have to do it in the hospital. But during that test stage, we implant that lead, that hair thin like lead down to the nerve and it's connected to a battery pack that's kind of you wear on your waistband. And you wear it for up to 14 days. So you can see um, the patient here has a little black waistband over his hip. But what it's doing is stimulating the bladder, the nerve to the bladder to tell it to relax. And what we're looking for is at least 50% reduction in your symptoms. If we can get 100%, awesome. But we're looking for at least 50% reduction from your baseline. Meaning if you were going to the bathroom eight, nine, 10 times a day, do we cut that down to four or five times a day? If you were leaking and going through five pads a day, have we cut that down to two pads a day? If it's even better, awesome. Um, and if, the, if we see that, if we see that you've got an improvement, we, at that test stage, we still take out that lead, doesn't stay in, it's just a test. But if you've got an improvement, we can implant the full device. And the full device, when you think about how long it's been around, it's been around over 20 years. And I tell patients, because sometimes they say, oh, it's a test. Am I a guinea pig? Is this, is this, you know, is this a medical trial? No, it's not a trial. We just want to test to make sure this treatment will work for you before we implant it. So it's been around for a long time. And when you think about success rates, eight, over 80% success rate at five years, meaning at five years time, 80% of patients, if not more, still have the device still working. And the nice thing about the device is that once it's in, it does its job. 
It's not a medication that you have to take every day or injection that you have to come in three to four times a year to get or ankle nerve stimulation that you have to come in for 12 weeks to do. Once it's in, it does its job. Now, it's not for everybody, but it's another treatment option that we have in the toolbox. Also, one thing to consider, it's imaging compatible for any type of imaging that you may need. So ultrasound, CT scans, MRI, doesn't matter. With this type of device, you can get whatever imaging you need. So how do you know if the therapy is right for you? Well, do you have symptoms? Do you feel like your bladder is running your life? Do you have urgency, frequency, leakage, sudden, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. You're curtsying, trying to keep it in, and it's going. Doesn't matter how much you try. Okay, you have symptoms. Have you tried things that didn't work, whether it be lifestyle modification, modification, you know, cutting back on the coffee, cutting back on the caffeine? Um, did you try medications, tablets that maybe cause side effects, or you just can't be bothered with taking enough pill day in and day out? And if so, and we do that study, that urodynamics, that EKG study on your bladder that shows, yeah, you have overactive bladder, then yeah, you're a candidate for it. And we can always move forward with a test trial. So here, showing you again, 84% satisfaction for those who use the Interstim device. They have control over their bladder, 50%, at least 50% reduction in their system. Three times greater improvement on quality of life. All of this is quality of life. I tell patients, your overactive bladder is not gonna be the cause of your ultimate demise, but it definitely plays into your quality of life. And we have come a long way in medicine when it comes to cancer control or treatment for different things. One thing that we have to continue to grow in is getting our patients' quality of life back. So sometimes we'll see patients who have had prostate cancer and they've had radiation for prostate cancer. And that radiation has caused overactive bladder because we know radiation can irritate the bladder. And we have treated him from a prostate cancer standpoint, no more cancer, thank you. But now he's using the bathroom all of the time. And he can't go golfing because he's got a rush to get to a bathroom and he leaks into his khakis before he can get there. We wanna get you that quality of life back. And this is what these treatment options allow. Um, so you do not have to live in the bathroom. You can live a full life, have a great quality of life. There are treatment options outside of medications that perhaps your primary care doctor has given you. Perhaps medications I have given you or partner of mine has given you. There are other treatment options and we can get you on the right pathway and get you down to the right treatment. So with that, I think we'll open it up for questions. Christy, I'll turn it back over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Barrett Harlow. I was taking notes as you were talking. This was so informative and so helpful. I know for so many people, especially as I'm seeing the questions come in. Um, I want to pause really quick though. Before we get to questions, I am gonna end and share the results of that very first poll that many of you answered. And I want you to see who you're joining with tonight. 90% of you on this call tonight, and there's a lot of you, struggle with voiding dysfunction, either urinary or bowel control issues. And then let's see, 14% of you have struggled for less than a year. 48% of you have struggled for one to two years, 29% two or more years. And then only 10% of you don't have these symptoms, but wow, that's profound. Many of you have been living with this for a very long time. Um, I think that there is industry out there that kind of normalizes this and makes you feel like it's just a normal part of aging and you just got to wear some diapers. And so um, I'm just so grateful, Dr. Barrett Harlow, that you're one of the providers out there that um, is really trying to disrupt that normalization and get folks to getting the help that they deserve. And then 67% um, of you have actually never been offered another treatment option for your urinary or bowel control issues. 
um, other than oral medications or lifestyle modifications. And as Dr. Barrett Harlow said, you know, she'll walk you through some of those more conservative therapies to see if they work for you, because if they do, great, let's call it a day. But a lot of times they don't work. And so um, it, it looks like for many of you, almost 70% of you, you've never even been offered. And, and I'm glad that tonight, uh, Dr. Barrett Harlow changed that. I'm going to launch right. one additional poll before folks, before we get to questions, and then if anybody needs to hop off. So let me launch this last poll. It's very quick. Three quick answers. We have, or I'm sorry, Georgia Urology has opened up for someone to be on standby to make phone calls right after this event. So once it ends, boom, you can get a phone call um, to make an appointment. And it's it's quite difficult to get an appointment these days. I am on a waiting list with a cardiologist um, and I can't get in until May. So <laughs> they've been very gracious to open up their schedule and to have somebody call you right back if that's easier to just have somebody call you. Um, the second question is, hey, maybe you don't wanna call back, but you would like to make an appointment. And Dr. Barrett Harlow has several days and several times that you can select. Um, some are in the morning and some are in the afternoon on varying days. So you can select that. And then, um, and then just the third question is, we're just wondering, have you ever tried medications um, for your bladder or bowel control problems? That'll help Dr. Barrett Harlow to kind of have a gauge of when she's talking to you, where you've been, and maybe where um, she should kind of direct you. While you finish answering that, I want to mention outside of getting a, a call right back um, after the event or indicating what day of the week and time works for you. If you want to take matters in your own hands and you want to make an appointment, Georgia Urology has made this so stinking simple. You literally take out your phone and you open up your camera. Surely you've taken pictures of your family. You just open up the little phone icon. And just like you would scan a menu at a restaurant, although I know sometimes that can be prohibitive when you struggle with bladder or bowel control issues, you're not always going out as often, but hey, maybe we'll get you there. Um, so Sorry. open up your camera and you'll hold it right over this box on the right-hand side of the screen that has a bunch of little black boxes on the inside. That is a QR code. When you hover over it with your phone, with your camera open, you're going to see this tiny little, it's called a URL or a website, and you're going to click on it. And it's going to direct you to Georgia Urology's scheduling portal, right to Dr. Barrett Harlow's page, who specializes in treating voiding dysfunction. And right then and there, you can make an appointment. It is quite possibly the easiest thing. And surprisingly enough, there are many practices that don't have their own self-scheduling portal. Um, I've actually seen a physician recently that doesn't. So um, this is quite unique. It's very, very <clears throat> quick. The next quickest thing that, um, that you could do to make an appointment would be to go to that website right in the middle of the screen, www.gaurology.com. If you go there and click on it, you can make an appointment by going to that self-scheduling portal. But what's even cool, you know, if you wanna peruse the site, um, Dr. Barrett Harlow has some videos there. They have some blogs, things that you can learn a lot of, you know, information on about different things. So peruse their site. It's a wonderful place um, to get information and then also make an appointment. And then just above that link, if you're like, nope, I don't wanna, I got fat thumbs, I don't wanna, figure out how to do this on my phone um, or my computer, you can call directly into Georgia Urology at 770-460-9777. That's right above that GA Urology website in the middle box right there. Um, and you can call and make an appointment, but you're gonna have to wait until they're open, right? So this is the beauty of just doing it all electronically. I do need to mention really quickly, if you're not joining from around this area and you need to find a local um, a, a local specialist, you can go to controlleaks.com forward slash bladder or bowel and find one in your local area. Um, that rarely happens if you're joining from out of wherever, but that is there for you. So um, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and we're going to get to questions.